Joining me now is Clint Watts, a national security contributor for NBC and MSNBC. Also, Ben Collins, a senior reporter for NBC News. And Ben, earlier today, you tweeted out two examples of these computer-generated columnists, which is wild, okay? <laughs> that is wild. This is Vladimir, <laughs> and this is Irina. Um, they are not real people. <laughs> they are fake people. Um, their faces are built with a computer, with AI. How did this operation work? Uh, Zerlina, I think we can both agree they're too beautiful to be journalists, unfortunately. <laughs> they were created. <laughs> they were created instantly on a website called thispersondoesnotexist.com. And that is, uh, that, that's a website you can just create as many as you want over and over again until you get one that looks real enough. And that's what happened here with Arena and Vladimir. Um, they were created as Facebook profiles to bolster the credibility of uh, these pages that were tied back to a Russian influence operation called News Front and South Front, which are known actors. The State Department uh, identified these in 2020. They were now posting on a website called Ukraine Today, but they're all over social media. They were on Facebook. They still have accounts on Russia's Facebook VK. Um, and you know they're still they're still posting today as we speak. After we posted this article, Arena, who again does not exist in real life, posted another article on this Ukraine Today website. They are hard at work trying to make it look like the Ukrainians are losing this war right now, even though it's going a lot harder than they thought it was going to be. It's so fascinating to to get inside of the propaganda operation because, as a former Hillary staffer, I was just on the receiving end of the propaganda operation in 2016. And Clint, you wrote a lot about that. <laughs> Are these operations similar from what we've seen before? Yes. I, I think the only upgrade really is, like Ben talked about, just using artificial faces, you know, artificial personalities. If this was 2014, 15, you'd see the infamous dog picture or just copying someone mm -hmm. else's photo and using it. Um, but they see that as a way to create a Potemkin village. Remember, it was the Soviets that created the idea of fake villages to make things look bigger than they were, Potemkin villages. And so this is really part and parcel of that strategy. And it, it is not just used, by the way, uh, by nation states. Russia is the most prolific. They have very specific objectives, and we're seeing it you know, throttled way up. But you'll see this all the time in commercial uses, you know, amplifying everything from activists or political causes to certain products and, and services. And so I think it just really comes to this reality that we're in that we don't know what reality is. I mean, we've gotten to this point where there's so much synthetic media that we just kind of don't even think about it that much. But what is important is uh, this use of journalists. The ones Ben, you know, noted last night, we saw another batch of them last year. Um, they're prolific, particularly on Telegram is another place that you'll find them. And they're really, you know, layering, repeating and recycling the war narratives of the Kremlin, particularly around Ukraine right now. And they'll shift to the next topic as well. So really something to watch, I think, as we move forward. And, and hopefully the tech companies create better detection algorithms for this kind of stuff, too. This is so fascinating to me because I always assumed that some of the faces I was seeing on Instagram were not real because they're too symmetrical. And now I think I have some evidence uh, that that may be the case. Um, ben, in terms of the propaganda operation this time, you mentioned that it hasn't been as successful as previous instances. Why? I mean, why is it that Vladimir Putin is trying his best to spread propaganda and the world is essentially rejecting it um, and pointing it out and calling it out so that we, we know what the propaganda actually is? I mean, why is that happening? Well, all this propaganda was front run by the Biden administration who pushed all of all of the truth out. They said, you know, expect false flags, expect this stuff to come, Ex expect people to start blaming the Ukrainians for stuff that they didn't do. Uh, expect expect us to believe, by the way, that uh, that Zelensky, who is half Jewish, is somehow a Nazi. You know, expect just expect things that you're not that you're not supposed to be able to really uh, consume as reality. Try to consume those as reality. That That is a big problem they're having here. Some of this stuff is just unbelievable. Um, they, they, they got in over their skis here. It feels rushed. It doesn't feel as uh, tightly wrapped as usual. And people can see this on the ground. People have first person video on the ground from places on places like TikTok and Facebook and Twitter. You know, they are seeing what's actually going on here. And that's a Russian invasion into a sovereign country. It's really hard to spin that any other way with propaganda. It's been a, a long time today going through TikTok. It is so fascinating. 
to think about the ways in which social media is being used in this specific con conflict. And Clint, we've, we've talked about a lot about on this show about the protests that have popped up uh, in Russia sp with people speaking out against the invasion. I mean, we're, we, we have to just keep in mind that we're talking about Russia. We're not talking about, they don't have a bill of rights. Like they don't have uh, the thing where they have a right to go out and do this, but they are doing it knowing that they will be treated very harshly. I mean, do you think that is, there's a possibility with the context that Putin's propaganda may not be as effective as it has been in the past, that a movement like this one, a people-powered movement, could work? Certainly, I would like to say yes. My instinct is to say no. Uh, I think there's a chance that it could. I think the difference this time is the economic uh, shockwave that really hit Russia today, uh, you know, on a Monday. And I think this is really settling in for the people in Russia how serious this is. Remember, even if you don't believe the propaganda, you're seeing it all day and you're not seeing an alternative version of what is reality. Until recently, they just had no access to it. Separately, Russian casualties are quite high. I, I, I honestly believe when the Russian people start to find out how many people have been killed and how many have been wounded already in this very short war uh, from this perspective, mm -hmm. they're going to be shocked. I think the third thing is the economic ramifications that are starting to unfold are going to change things dynamically. I hope they will take out to the streets. I hope that uh, a lot of those law enforcement officers, military personnel will stop. Um, can, can I guarantee that? No. Um, I also think there's an opportunity with oligarchs. I mean, many of these Russian oligarchs, very wealthy people, powerful people, lived in the West, worked in the West, and used their money in the West. And I think they're a conduit by which we can try and reach back into Russia and try and communicate some sort of end to these hostilities. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.